Okay, so you should have already seen the tutorial for doing the ghosts. This is very similar, um, other than the way we do the frame and adding beads for the mouth. Otherwise, it is basically the same. Um, I've done them as two separate ones because obviously people may not want to watch both. Or if you do, you can, obviously. I encourage that. Please do watch both. Um, it helps me get views and uh, 10,000 views and 1,000 subscribers my channel becomes like legitimate and you can start getting paid and things so if you want to support me in that please do <laughs> um, so yeah this time we're going to be doing the skull um, so we're going to be creating this frame um, same as what I mentioned on the ghost I'm just going to do two loops rather than doing a full bail the reason for that being that I don't want the tutorial to go on too long because I have limited energy and I'm just really wanting to get these done so that they get up before Halloween. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do this skull. Um, so we're going to create that and the way we do the mouth uh, was exactly the same as what we did for the ghost. It's just going to be slightly different in that that was a circle on the ghost one. These are just my rough drawings, the way I try and figure out what I'm going to be doing. Um, so that's what we're doing in this tutorial. Uh, to begin with we're going to have one millimetre wire which is I believe 18 gauge and 0.315 wire which I believe is 28 gauge. I will write those in though just in case I've got that wrong. And we're going to take approximately 25 centimetres. We need a little less than what we did for the ghost. Um, because obviously there's not as much. Uh, in this tutorial also you need some beads I suggest seed beads um, so that's four millimeter and below I will be using either two or three millimeter beads for the mouth I haven't decided yet because I haven't decided what colors I want to use that's the only reason nothing past that so we're going to go to the middle section find where our middle is about here and I'm going to go a few centimeters either side um, and create what will be our mouth. Now I say this all the time, I always end up doing my creations bigger than is necessary. I think it's just part of my condition that I always have to have things bigger so that I can understand them better in my brain. If you were doing this and you wanted it to be smaller, um, I'd take, say, here we'll go with 20 centimetres, find the middle, kink, kink, and you can do the exact same with significantly smaller amounts and rather than doing it as large as I do, you know, go up significantly less, okay? So that's just what I would do, that's 20 centimetres, obviously that's going to be a lot smaller than the one I'm doing. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind when you are creating. So I'm going to go up a centimetre and a half and kink out. Same on the other side. Kink out. I also think it's easier for you guys to see when I do them bigger because I do have to have a camera that's zoomed in so much and I know I've had people say in the past on other videos, you know, that the detail being so fine they needed it bigger. So I like to pretend I'm also doing it for you guys. <laughs> and I'm going to take something that's round and I'm just going to, from the curl point, I'm just... You know what you do with paper? And you want it to get a kind of coil. That's what we're doing here. I don't want it to be perfect because when you look at skulls, they kind of do have... I mean, obviously they've got dips on them, but even like the cartoony ones, they're not perfectly round in any way. So that's why I decided to do it like this okay and then you decide just how big you want it and where you're going to want it to cross over so i'm going to go with that and in the exact same way i did with the other tutorial i'm going to bring these parts up and have them as the bail nice and simple now one thing I should have done in the previous tutorial but I was so, the way I do it when I'm in bed is different to what's easiest on the camera. So I'm actually going to fix this here first before I do the face shape because it's a lot easier. So I'm going to take about 40 centimetres 
the reason being that that's just the easiest length for me to work with because I will want to do the full frame. It's probably going to take, well, depends on the size you make this, obviously, if you were doing it in the small version, I just kind of showed you roughly, you would obviously use a bit less, um, but this takes about two metres, two and a half metres, depends how tight you do the coils, depends what wire you're using. If you're doing exactly the same as me, you're probably going to use about two, three metres. Okay, um, so we're just going to attach this bit here. The simplest way is to actually wrap here, bring it down so that the coils are already fixed, and then do it along, and then attach the two together and carry on a bit. Um, I haven't decided quite where I'm going to put the mouth shape in, uh, eyes and nose actually, sorry, the mouth is down here for this particular tutorial. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. So we're just going to do some coils on here to begin with. And these don't have to be perfect because this is basically just anchoring it to make it easier for us in a little while. One top tip I will say is, I, I noticed I kept doing this and it was my own stupid fault. I kept, when I was anchoring it, then I was cutting it off and neatening it. And um, that can lead to actually spiralling around the wire when you try and do coils. So leave this tail on until you've actually begun. Um, I, I do it quite a few times and I, I know every time I'm doing it, I'm like, why have you done that again? But um, I'm going to blame brain fog for that one. But just be aware of that. Keep that tail on because it helps you stop the wire from moving. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring those closer together. Okay, and once I'm kinda happy where I want the wires to be, that's when I'm gonna go over both of them. This is basically just connecting two base wires. I have a video on that with different options if you wanna watch it. Do whatever you feel most comfortable with. Don't feel you have to copy me. Quite frankly, every time I do this, I change it slightly because I'm just doing whatever I'm thinking of at the time. Half the time I'm not even thinking, I'm just letting my hands do whatever they want and let the wire guide me. So apparently this time I'm doing a free free. But it could easily have been any other wrap. I think I mentioned this on the cat tutorial. If you're going to do single wraps, do it on the one that's open because it's easier. It's quite funny things that you don't think about until you're actually wrapping. And then I've actually learned a lot just from doing these videos myself. Things that I never really thought about before because it's only when you're teaching others that you're like oh that's really obvious why didn't I think of that before so you know if you yourself want to start doing these two tutorials and teaching others you know we have a Facebook group please come and join it um, and feel free to you know, share your own top tips and get involved you know I've, had, I've met some lovely people it's only a small group at the moment but there's some really lovely people in there and you know you don't have to have anything wrong with you you know obviously I do this channel for people with dexterity issues and brain fog and that's the idea behind it because I want to create a community of you know supportive people that just love jewellery making um, and if you fit that bill you know come along um, but yeah it's a really lovely group and if you want to you know share your own tutorials feel free please do there's another lady um, who has a channel it's in I'm not sure what the language is she's from Denmark um, but she has um, English subtitles, so that's a, uh, I love her tutorials, they're really good. Um, I'm put a link to her channel below actually, um, and she's in the Facebook group. And you know, there's other people who uh, there was one lady who shared a tutorial that well, she didn't share the tutorial, she shared how she created the piece, and it was absolutely amazing. It was, um, it's like a tree of life but with um, beads and a cabochon, it was really lovely. Um, and then there's another lady who shared like a five braid um, picture that she'd done. Um, so yeah, the group's starting to grow a little bit and people are getting involved and it's really lovely. So if you do want to come and join, please do, you know. It's, um, it's really good. I'm really happy that so many people have joined it and are getting involved.
Okay, and then I would just do single wraps along the frame until I got to the point where I needed to attach the uh, eyes, nose, mouth part of the skull. Okay, so if anyone saw the cat tutorial, we're about to do basically the same thing as there where, depending on how big you did the skull, again, if you've done it this size or smaller, this edits the size that we're going to do here. Um, so I'm going to decide where I want the two to attach, kind of there-ish, then the size of the eyes I want, and the size of the nose. And then I'll be able to edit that slightly to what I want. Um, so I'm going to take another length. Again, this will change how much wire you need at this point. Because if I'd done one this size and you know significantly smaller, then I would need say well, decided to there. One, two round round nose obviously the amount of wire i need to do that versus that would be significantly less probably about mm, five centimeters less to that one um so that's just something to bear in mind i'm going to cut off about 15 centimeters i may even actually i'm going to cut off 20 i know that's going to be too much but i want to be safe that sorry and I'm going to go to the middle part and we're actually going to do the nose section first. So take in a pair of flat nose pliers. I want to create the edge. So I'm going to bend that over, put that there. And again, same on this side. Actually, I want that a bit flatter than what I just did. And then I'm going to make it as small as I've drawn there. Okay, make it as sharp as you so wish. Okay, and then we're going to create the eyes. I'm going to use my step pliers for this, and I think I'm going to go with the second biggest. than I wanted to. So there we go. Same on this side. Gone the same step. Apparently I completely got the halfway mark wrong on that one seeing as there's a good bit more there left. But that's not a big deal because like I say it was always going to be more than I needed okay so I've got my shape there and putting this back in here you can see roughly where I want it to attach again so I'm going to take this away okay and now we've got our frame and our middle section and you can adjust this as you want you can also twist them over and under depending on which way you want the eyes to be I don't think I mentioned that in the last tutorial so there you are decide where you want them to sit so I'm going to hold this in place first because we've been yeah, very slippery the texture of the Okay. 
about there. I need to go over a bit more. And this is kind of just a, a trial and error, adjusting as you see fit. Okay. So I roughly know where I want that to go. And same here. So I'm going to go in with my pliers here, hold them there, just pull that around, and take in a pair of flush cutters, cut that so that it's still open, and now you attach it, I want it to be straight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to close it into place here. So I'm going to need to use the pliers some more. I'm just going to use some round nose pliers actually because the step pliers are too big to get in that space. Sure it's closed properly okay and then I want to hold it against the frame and I'm going to wrap over the front and it's up to you if you just do one or if you do two wraps through this frame I'm going to do two this time just to make it extra secure and then you would continue on with the single loop wrapping Okay, so now this can slip at this point still because we haven't attached the other side. So that's something to be aware of. Now I'm gonna to need to attach some more wire on this far side. They always take about 40 centimeters. That's just because that's a length I'm comfortable working with. Nothing to do with how much we're gonna need. This length will probably take me to about here. So I'm going to attach that mentioned this before I think it was actually just earlier on in this same tutorial but I've had to pause and do other bits in the meantime so keep the tail on that was the point I was making I'm just gonna do some anchor wraps squish them together push this up here okay and then I'm gonna attach it about there so I'll start the bend in the same way I did and then take that off for the moment. Whilst I do these last few wraps to get it to that point. You can always mark the wire so that you don't go over where you just decided to put that. Sorry, did not mean to go out of frame there. Um, but yeah, so wherever you decide to attach this, you can mark the wire. And part of the reason why I suggest wrapping the whole frame is because these can still move, as you notice there. So even though they're attached to each other, unless we did the entire frame in one bit of wire, which would be ridiculous and so difficult, the wire would get caught on itself all the time. And just from the point of view of your dexterity and having to fight the wire, you'd be exhausted. So it's easier just to take shorter lengths and do it in a gradual process. Um, but again, it doesn't mean you have to do the whole frame because otherwise this can happen. Um, but for the sake of the finished piece and your energy levels and not having to fight so much, it's worth it. So that's just another thing to be aware of. You could, you know, just 
not wrap the frame but obviously then it can still slip around personal choice if you so want to keep it that way you know it's your piece you do what you like but this is just what I have found to work better for me when I am creating okay so I think that was about where I decided I was going to attach this let's just double check oh, yeah pretty much exactly that was pure luck okay one thing I have noticed when I am doing things like this I've become very aware of lengths without actually knowing them you know I'm always saying take about da -da -da, and it always is like when I measure it I'm like oh that's pretty much exactly I think you when you get used to working with wire and lengths you get so accustomed to it you don't even need to know the exact length anymore you your eyes and uh, muscle memory whatever it is they definitely like pick up on things like that just a random little bit for you there I'm just going to use the back of my round pliers for this bit. Okay. I'm going to cut that in the same way we did on the other side. Close up the loop. Do it like a jump ring. Make sure it's closed properly. Straightening up. Okay, and like I said before, I'm actually going to go through rather than just straight over as I have done. Oh, I think it was the, the ghost tutorial, we just went straight over. I'm just giving it a little bit extra security this time. And then we're just going to finish wrapping and what we do from this point onwards is we're going to wrap to here and that's when we'll add in the uh the teeth shall we say that that's what it re represents so i'm probably going to fast forward and um, i will do some wraps on camera but i'm not going to wrap the whole thing because you obviously know how to do single wraps and then we'll get to doing the teeth so now we're going to do the mouth section i've got some beads ready for doing the eyes and some for doing the teeth i've got some white and gray mixes there we're going to do across there we're going to start here at the bottom and i'm going to take about a meter and a half of this uh, 0.315 um, and what i'm going to do is actually i've it will be about that but it'll be the usual 40 centimeters for me i'm actually going to attach it here in the middle to start with i'm just going to do my coils on the far side the point is is that i need to do all the coils and then come back and then have enough to come back again so i'm probably going to need actually a, a meter and a half to do that i'm going to work off the reel the reason being that i can just Cut off some more in a little bit. Obviously, having a longer length is going to make it slightly more difficult, as I've mentioned before, when you're pulling through. As long as you know, if you can't work with a length this long, 
as long as you can add in at these points it should be fine i just want to use a longer length to try and do it all in one go an easier way of using less is as you can see down this side i've done looser wraps so that's what we're going to do here of getting tangled this is partly why I like to use shorter lengths because it's actually quite a bit more difficult Let's move that out of the way going back to the middle point And you need to decide roughly how far off you're going to want to add the teeth in. Uh, I'm going to want to do the first layer about there. So I'm going to pull this over here and I'm going to weigh it so it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to take about the same length on the opposite side and cut that. Again, the looser that we do these wraps, the less wire we're going to need. Um, I had thought I was going to do individual loops but because of my energy. I don't really want to waste a lot of time just doing single loops. As I'm sure by now, whether it's this tutorial or any of the previous ones, you've seen me do them plenty of times and you know how to do them. Or you could just get a tool that does um, gives more coils for you and put them over the frame. Uh, I will be doing some reviews in upcoming tutorials, one of them being Gizmo Coil Makers. I've got a few different ones um, that will be on one of the review Tuesdays. And then I've got um, a couple of other tools that I'm interested in reviewing and uh, some tutorials. Uh, that's all coming up in the coming months, especially with Christmas coming up. I think people like to consider gifts don't they so I thought it might be a, a fun idea to tell you you know my thoughts on them which ones I prefer the prices um whether I think they're worth the money or not um so you could get a gizmo coiling tool and before we'd done all this we could have just wrapped it at the bottom and gone over that's just one thing to consider so I'm just gonna let this wire come loose and I'm going to thread on some of my beads. I'm just doing them all um, the same size. I'm not really fussed about the specifics of the colour. I mean the white, some of them are green, some of them because this was nicely organised and then it fell and they went everywhere. So uh, I gave up on that one because I really couldn't be bothered sorting them all out again. So you just need to thread them on. attach it on the other side and I would use this wire and go back through each of these individually but I'm not going to do that today because for the sake of this video and my energy levels that's going to be really fiddly and I, I just don't have that in me today so we're just going to pretend that we've gone all the way through those wires on the other side uh, all the way through those beads sorry not wires there we go, and then we'll do some more wraps here. And then you decide where you want your second layer to be. 
and we're going to go with here okay and then we're going to attach some beads again here at this point Okay, and then once you've threaded through back the same way, all you have to do then is use the rest of the wire to finish off the frame. Um, again, I would, were I to sell this, I'd do this, you know, with tight coils, but I'm uh, a bit exhausted right now, so I just want to fast forward. So I'm going to use just loose coils to get this done but you would take your time and make it all nice and neat okay then you'd finish off the wire those that don't know what I do is I get it as tight as possible, cut it as close as we can and I go in with a pair of flat nose pliers and rock on the wire to make sure there's no sharp bits coming out. I'm going to do the same here. Okay, I'm just going to finish it here, same as what I said, pull it tight, go as close to the wire as you can, and rock on the wire. Okay, and then the final part is we're going to put some beads in for the eyes. You want some roughly about the size of the holes that you made. Okay, so taking your wire, I'm just going to use what's left from the bits we just cut off then. What we're going to do is not lose everything, let's put them there. I'm going to take our wire, um, well, you're not going to need this much at all, I'm just using what I've got left over. And we're going to attach it. You're probably going to need about 10 centimetres, but I always go with more rather than less. just attach it with a few wraps 
this also helps to secure those bits there so that they're not going to move either. So performing a double action in one there. Okay, then I'm going to trim that, stop the beads from running away. Okay, cut that off. Using the other side, I'm just going to thread a bead on. Decided to go with orange as this is a Halloween-y tutorial. Put the beads in the position that you want. This one actually sits perfectly in the eye socket, which I did do purposely. It's why I chose that particular size and then a six mil bead. Um, actually, I think that's a right mil, but it doesn't matter if there is a bit of a, a gap or anything, as long as you attach them. Okay. And in the same way you've done previously. Be careful you don't cut the wire you just put through. You only want to cut off the excess. Okay, and then we close that. Okay, so we're gonna attach the bead on this side I'm, my camera cut out at some point and I'm not sure when so I'm just going to do it again um, so take a length of wire and we're going to go through here um, we're going to attach the two bits of the frame together so it's actually going to have the double action of securing and then forming the first few wraps for putting the bead on. Okay, and then we're just going to add the bead on. Make sure your wire doesn't have any kinks in. secure it in place. And trim that wire. So there you have your skull with some beads. And then what we're going to do finally is we're just going to create the bale. This isn't a special bale in any way. It's just a very simple one. I'm going to put the wire in and bend it over. It's the exact same one I did for the ghost. I have done a tutorial with different 
wire weaving on two base wires so you could use any one of them or an actual bail making tutorial and I'll link both of those below for you to watch if you want to do this slightly fancier but for the sake of this I am just going to do a simple bail okay I'm taking my pliers just going to cut that there cut that there close them up like you would jump rings and there you have the completed skull okay thank you all for watching um if you did like this tutorial please hit that thumbs up button and if you want to support me the best way to do that would be to hit that subscribe button um, and then obviously you can share and do all that stuff too if you so feel the need. Also I have a Facebook group, um, I think I might have mentioned it previously in this tutorial but I'll link that below. Um, I think that's everything, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a happy Halloween and uh, I'll see you again soon. Love you, bye!